Up next, I'm joined by Dr. Keith Fox, Professor of Cardiology at the University of Edinburgh in Scotland, UK. We discuss fast MI and GRACE, first external and long-term validation in the fast MI registry of the updated electronic GRACE risk score. Keith, tell us a little bit about GRACE and then perhaps about your efforts at trying to simplify the GRACE score so that it can be used by everybody. Well, Fred, I think the guidelines all say, you know, the North American guidelines, the European guidelines, they say in evaluating the patient with non-ST elevation ACS, a composite score is much more accurate than individual parameters in working out who needs more intensified treatment and expedited intervention. The problem is, in each of the countries, in North America, Europe, around the world, the risk scores are not systematically used. And the main reason they weren't systematically used is they were cumbersome. You either had to add up things or look up tables or they were just too clunky. So what we did, based on the original GRACE program of 102,000 patients from all around the world, we developed a risk score. And what we've got now is an updated, smarter version. And what I mean by that is we took 32,000 patients. We took the independent predictors. And then we said, okay, which are the eight of those that carry more than 90% of the risk to make it easy to use? And now what we've done is developed this into an electronic algorithm that gets downloaded into any mobile device, Android, smartphone, iOS device, iPad, etc., or a laptop. And what you do is you just key in the parameters. And it's more accurate because we've got non-linear fits to things like uh, so creatinines, ages, and, and so on. So it's, it's more accurate than the original one. And as you mentioned, we've tested it externally. So what we've done is we've gone to our colleagues in the Fast MI, the French registry, Nicolas Dasha and colleagues, and they've got a very comprehensive data set from back in 2005 with long-term follow-up and said, okay, if you apply this risk score, does it work? And the answer is, yes, it does. And it comes out with a C statistic of about 0.8283, not just in hospital, not just on discharge, six months, one year, three years. So it's really very highly accurate. And we need to remember that the Timmy risk score has got a C statistic of about 0.65. So here's a powerful tool. We've just been playing with it, and you can see that it takes about 20, 30 seconds to enter the data. And you've got not only the numerical data, of what the percentage risk is, but also you've got the original risk score information and you've got a bar chart that shows where your patient lies on the whole distribution curve. So the aim was to make it user-friendly so that everybody from the cardiologist, the internist, the emergency medicine doc, the nurse practitioner can use it readily to get an idea of what the risk profile is for that patient. And we went even further than that, which was to say some parameters, like some biomarkers, may not be available when somebody first presents, like creatinine. So we've got substitutions for that. That's history of renal dysfunction. We've got a substitution for Killip class. And to make it really easy, those can be applied, not quite as accurate as the full score, but it would stratify the patients into groups. And why we think that's important is if you look at, for example, all the intervention studies, there's hugely greater benefit in those at highest risk versus medium and lower risk. So really, our aim is to make this freely available. There's no costs. You can download it. The easiest thing is to go to the website, which is www.gracecore.co.uk, or you can go to the UMass one, or you can go straight to the App Store, and it's there. Good. So a patient gets into our practice, has a history of an MI, or shows up with an MI, STEMI or non-STEMI? Both. And you can now put some very simple things together to get a GRACE score and come up with some predictability about mortality risk. Even more than that, Fred. Mm -hmm. You can go to the emergency department of people with undifferentiated chest pain, just broadly suspected to be cardiac. And it works in those two. That's good. That's even better. We now have a patient in our practice, been mm -hmm. through the hospital. You plug in the numbers. You find them at low risk. You're mm -hmm. 
more comfortable in managing them medically. If you find them at high risk, you better start doing something to intervene to keep them out of trouble. Sure, sure. Or they presented to a community hospital. And rather than hang on to that patient, the fact that this older patient, maybe with a considerable comorbidity, maybe they should be transferred today to need more intensive treatment. Right. And I can tell you in some of the smaller hospitals, the hospitals are saying, why are you transferring the patient? Well, now exactly. you have an objective number to say, look, I've just done the score. This is a high-risk yeah. patient. We've got to get him on the move to a, exactly. a better and more capable facility. Yeah. What's next? Where do you go from this? Refine the score? We've got a number of exciting ideas. So we're good at predicting death in MI, but less good at predicting recurrent plaque rupture. Mm -hmm. So in the pipeline, we've got some very innovative things to look at what are the determinants of plaque rupture, future MI events, really to understand the biology to help clinicians in saying who's at risk. Because we've looked in the past at five-year outcomes, even on people on optimal medical treatment, having had a PCI after ACS, and they have recurrent events. And so we haven't nailed it with our current secondary prevention. Yeah, and I think we feel the same way across the board. When we look at our patient population, we aren't that good at a large proportion of the population. That's We're good right. at a smaller proportion of the population mm -hmm. in dealing with their coronary disease. But in the total population, we fall short. So I think this idea of trying to predict events, not just mortality, but future events, mm -hmm. is going to be very important. If it can come down to an app like the Grace app, I think it would be a very valuable tool for practice on a day-to-day -day basis. And of course, this doesn't <laughs> substitute for clinical judgment. This is a tool that just supplements that. But we know from the studies that we've done and have now been done around the world that there's a treatment risk paradox. And this treatment risk paradox means actually it's the lowest risk people who are more likely to get intensive treatment and interventional treatment. So if you can identify Here's somebody who's actually high risk. Here's the potential for benefit. This may change some of that practice. Yeah. Well, I like to think that we all develop our own nonlinear registries in our own heads. Sure. But a certainly limited experience, limited number of patients. You've got hundreds of thousands of patients in this study, which makes your intrinsic algorithm refined by a simple app you can get sure. to on a, on And Fred, not everybody's got the experience that you've got. So here's well, something to make it simpler. That's right. This is great. I think, as I said, to get an entire multi-year, how long has it been? 10 years or it's so? A, it's a 10-year program. A 10-year program into an app that can be used by thousands of physicians, I think is a really substantial accomplishment. So let me congratulate you on getting to that. And we'll look forward to the next round of things from Grace. So thanks again for being here. And again, congratulations on a wonderful Congress here in Amsterdam. Thanks a lot.